Hello again, and welcome to Winning with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. The information on today's program was gathered from many different places and people. If you hear yourself in our conversation, it's not all about you. For speaking appearances, support, and just to get a hold of us, just give us a call, 727-422-1833, or send me an email, dick at ewfw.org, or, you know, just go to the website and click on there and send us some something. It's, a, it's at ewfw.org. Now, today's program, we're going to be talking about something that I originally read in uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. If you remember your part that if you've ever read that book, there was a big section on masterminds and mastermind groups and the need for sharing that information. But this is what Napoleon Hill said about that. He said, the coordination of knowledge and the effort of two or more people who work towards a definite purpose in the spirit of harmony. And that was his definition of a mastermind group. Now, I'm going to take this a little further and really put it in some different words for you, because I believe it's so important that you hear these things. Now, a mastermind is a small group of individuals who come together for the purpose of supporting each other in reaching their goals. Did you hear that? The mastermind format is unique in that it issues it uses small groups or to explore and discover the ideas a specific book or an author or something that's going on in their business. Now, according to Wikipedia, which we all kind of enjoy, a mastermind group is a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring concept used to help members solve their problems with input and advice from the other group members. Think how important that would be is if you didn't have to do it all on your own and you didn't have to learn everything yourself. Now the concept, of course, we are talking about was coined in 1925, just a few years ago, by author Napoleon Hill in his book, The Law of Success, and described in more detail in his 1937 book, Think and Grow Rich, which I made mention to at the beginning. It seems that this Think and Grow Rich comes out every once in a while and people get real excited about it. And say, they've never seen or heard of it before. I can't find an entrepreneurial mind that I have met personally that hasn't read it and reread it. And it's funny, in our mastermind group that I belong to, that we, we refer back to it all the time. Why? Well, because it makes sense to do ongoing continuous learning and share with one another of how we can help each other achieve our goals. Now, masterminds are for anyone and everyone who want to grow. Do you get that? Masterminds are for anyone who wants to grow. They may consist of people from established groups, <clears throat> teams, and organizations, or they consist of strangers who are willing to come together and support one another in their personal and professional growth journeys. I'd also like to mention at this time, Andrew Carnegie attributed to his entire fortune and success to this kinds of mastermind groups. He said, and so, Many have many others. Some of those examples, you know, and the Inklings, mastermind groups was the informal literary, literary discussion group associated with the University of Oxford, England, for nearly two decades before early 1930s and late 1949. Members included likes of C.S. Lewis, author of the Chronicles of Narnia, J.R.R. R. Toklin, author of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. 
So I want you to think about when you, someone says, would you like to join a mastermind group? How important it could be to you or your business as well as your personal. Now, there's some questions that go along with this and we're going to cover them, okay? One of the questions that comes up quite frequently is how often and for how long should a mastermind group meet? Well, masterminds can be conducted anywhere that the team members are comfortable discussing their lives. Now, I'm going to caution you that this needs to be someplace that is not out in the open. It's not out in public. You need to meet someplace where you can have some quiet time as well as when you share things, you know it's going to stay there. Now, it's recommended that you meet weekly for pre, at a predetermined time and, and date and a place, okay? So while uh, most mastermind sessions go for between 60 and 90 minutes, this too is a flexible time. You need to adjust it to the based on the needs of your individual group and the size of your group. Nevertheless, it's important to designate a certain duration for each meeting. So then the people know what their time allotment is. And that says that you appreciate their time and they appreciate yours. And you see, that's a part of building this, this separate mind, this, this mind that's going to help one another. Now, I'm often asking, hey, Dick, yeah, I, I know that you lead a lot of these, these mastermind groups, and, and I, I don't lead a lot of them anymore. I only have one or two left. But I want to put this to you. But always is the question is, who leads the mastermind group? Well, masterminds are normally facilitated by a team member who assumes responsibility for structuring the group and guiding the group discussion. Smaller teams can alternate facilitating, facilitating responsibilities in the term of the leaders desired. I find that when your group gets more than six or eight, that this can really start to get unwieldy. But I have worked in mastermind groups where the, we have had large groups where there's 25 or 50, and we've had to really break them up into smaller groups to make them work. The fun part was bringing back the people who were the moderators in those smaller groups and putting them together and sharing those ideas. You see, we're still working on one thing, and that's helping one another. So we work on one goal at a time. So think about that. But you know what? This is really important piece. So let's go over the process, okay? Now, if you're, of course, riding along in your car and you can't really take some notes, um, maybe you can play this back later. But let's look at the process from a different standpoint that you actually have pen in hand and you're ready to take some notes. The process starts out this way. First of all, there needs to be an accountability check. And because masterminds are, are exactly that, they're masterminds, but they're accountability to one another within the group. So in the first meeting, team members will introduce themselves and briefly discuss why they have chosen part to partake in the mastermind group. This could be anywhere from, gee, I've had a business for 20 years and I'm ready to sell it. It could be, I'm just getting started and have no idea how to, to take it any further. It could be that, hey, we're just not making any money. We can't make any sales. No matter what it is, you need to come to the group with that idea and with that thought process and be open about it so they can hear where you're at, where you would like to go, and help you get there. Team members will discuss and hold each other accountable for one another's action plans. At every mastermind group, at every time we meet, there's some action plans for all of us. And when we come back together for the next time, those action plans, we often take and go around the, how'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you learn? All the different parts. 
you see, we have to hold each other accountable because that's the way things get done. Now, during the first meeting, a foundation of trust and camaraderie will be set in accountability partners, accountability partners who will assist you through the journey and help you gain growth and a mindset. And we will select them at that time at this first meeting. Having an accountability partner that you touch base with in between and during the mastermind groups. Most groups meet once a month or once a quarter. It depends on how you're working them. But in between, you need to be in contact with everyone else. You see how this works? You're building camaraderie. You're building relationships. Now, also, the time allotted for accountability check can be used for the discussing team's progress through the mastermind, through shortcomings or areas of weakness can also be discussed during this time. And as a team member, you're meant to grow together. One of the first masterminds I ever participated in was the Think and Grow Rich. And we met once a week. And during the week, we, we had an accountability partner, and we worked together on those simple, simple things that we were assigned to do. But what we found from that is there's not only building a strong relationship, but we found that when we were working with one another, the, the little menial problems that were coming up within our businesses seemed to evaporate because if I hadn't done that or, or, or achieved that, my partner might have and found an easier way to take and push it forward. So remember that this, this goes a whole lot deeper than just getting together and, and socialize. You're getting together for a reason. Okay? For a reason. Now, the second part of this process, we're going to call the icebreaker. This is an opening question that provides the team an opportunity to get warmed up to the meeting's topic right after the accountability check. Now, usually I try to make those some kind of smiling situations in here. Because I found when people start smiling, their brains work in a different way than when they're frowning. In an accountability group, when you've just talked about accountability, there's going to might be some things that didn't get done or some things that were looked overlooked or or maybe somebody just didn't do anything. And that might cause that frown. So in this opening, it needs to address the thing that you're going to work on in a different manner. So if you're the moderator, remember how to do that. Now, during that time with the icebreaker, uh, it says this will be the time of open discussion. Okay, open discussion. And all team members will have the chance to offer their thoughts on the icebreaker question. That's good because you can start to figure out how people are right then and there. Maybe they're having a bad week. Maybe they had a bad day. Maybe something happened and you can figure out where everyone is at at that particular time. Now, depending on the time you have available, you may decide to set a time limit for each response, but you may also decide to run an organic group. I have found that the organic group where there's no time limits, sometimes as a moderator, you've got to rein somebody in. You've got to bring them back to normal and bring them back to earth and, and let them know that, you know, hey, we've got four other people that need to speak what they want to say. Be, be, be exact. Be succinct. Let's get going. And whatever guidelines your group decides upon, it is always best to make sure that the entire team is engaged and actively participating. There again, uh, the, the people who are monitoring these, that if you're leading one, you need to kind of make sure if someone's not participating, you need to find out why. Sometimes I would wait until after the meeting to find that answer. Especially, it was usually some simple thing as they were having a bad day or something tragic happened. And they didn't want to share it right then with the group. Make sure if you're the moderator, you know what's going on. Now, the next piece is the round table topics. Okay. 
This, is, uh, this component consists of several questions designed to generate awareness and understanding through inquiry and team dialogue. So it might be that this question is going to be about the thing you're going to work on that time that you're going to be together at this mastermind. You understand? Let's just say that somebody sent an email to the group and said, hey, I'm just struggling with, with my employees coming to work on time. Can we do that? You know, can we can we run that by the mastermind group? So the question would be about that. Now, some of these questions are posed uh, by the person who is the moderator. Some of the questions can be come from the team. And that's why the, the connection, as you're getting ready to, to go to your next mastermind, those questions or things that need to happen, need to go to the moderator or facilitator, whichever you want to call them. And that way they can get that questions in there and get the dialogue started at the appropriate time. So I do hope you're, you're, you're seeing how this all works. Now, also at the roundtable time, I want you to know that this is an open discussion led by the team leader, moderator, facilitator, whichever you want to call them, and everyone should participate during the roundtable discussions. It's during this time that the best ideas will most probably be shared and growth will occur. Now, I'm going to encourage you during those times to not only to be able to speak your mind, but take some good notes. You never know those notes. It's funny. I, I, I've talked to several different people, and this happened to, to myself and my wife. We, we designed our very best company on a napkin when we were out talking at one of these mastermind groups. Think about it. Now, massive steps of action. Remember I told you there need to be at every every time you have a meeting, you have an action action plan that people are going to go away with actually putting something together into their life. You see, I truly believe it's important to end each session with a personal call to action. I also truly believe that it's essential to know that is up to you to take the action and sometimes massive action is necessary. Now here's the key here ladies and gentlemen. Only you can choose to take the action that is necessary to accomplish the goal. But if you don't have a call to action then why would you want to go to a mastermind? If you don't have a, a reason to be there and put in the time and the effort, why would you spend the time and possibly spend some money? A lot of times these masterminds are, are facilitated by people who are there to do that and bring people together in different businesses and whatnot to, to build their companies and reach their goals. And sometimes there is a cost that goes along with it. I know we run masterminds, we, we do it, and there is a cost based. And that's because we bring all those type of pieces and connect everyone together. There's a lot more that the facilitator does, believe me. For the next thing, I want to encourage all of you, um, I want you to be encouraged yourself, encourage the other people. And see, when you see the changes in, in that situation, I want you to encourage them, but I also want you to recognize them and, and say so. Don't, don't just uh, watch somebody grow and, and just sit there and, and watch, but let them know. Let them know that, that you're seeing it, you're, you're taking note of it, and they're going to take note of you. Again, I want you to write these things down. I want you to take and keep really good notes. I want you to be a participant in each and every one of these things. You need to know that the collaboration is the name of the game. So many times when we've run mastermind groups, we have tried to run them with individuals of a certain uh, business organization or those type of things. But the best mastermind groups that I ever have put together were business owners of many different genres, many different businesses who still had some of the same situations. 
whether it be employees, overtime, money, uh, accounting, you, you just imagine anything in your business. And I can tell you that what made it so special was, is the tree trimmer, you know, the, the arborist, he found out that the plumber was having some of the same situations. The plumber found out that the doctor in his doctor's office was having some of the same situations. The lady that worked in the cafeteria at a school found out that they, she had some of the same situations as the doctor did. That's what makes these so very powerful. The opportunity, though, is all about you. If you join a mastermind group, you need to know that you have to be part of it. You have to be there. You can't just show up and hope everything works out. You see, you're part of something bigger at the mastermind group. And that is always going to be a situation for you. Now, if you haven't read um, Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill, I'm going to tell you, you're missing a good time to make it happen. If you can find a mastermind group that will take you through that, I'm going to tell you that it's a good thing to make happen. Now, I see that we've got some time left after today's program, so I'm going to, to really take you someplace else. And the question came up the other day while we were talking about masterminds is why invest in the leadership coaching? Why, why invest in leadership coaching in my business? Well, the biggest reason is what worked then doesn't work now. And the time continuum is moving so fast it seems hard to catch or even grasp until it's passed. You see, we find ourselves holding on for dear life to what we know has worked in, for us in the past. And the truth of the matter is, the future belongs to those who learn more skills and combine them in creative ways. That was from Robert Greene, by the way. A coach is one who stays on top of new trends, allowing the individual to stay focused on the matters at hand. Now think about that. Now there's some ways that this can happen, of course, and and one of them is what we call OJT. Now, I bet some of you actually had survived OJT in your lifetime on the job training. And you know what? On the job training is, is not fast enough to replace what is being lost. You see, with the workforce slimming down and the retirements going up, job knowledge is being lost because we are not implementing the apprentice programs to ensure knowledge is retained. OJT takes time, investment, and time waits for no one. A coach accepts where, the, accepts where the individual is and moves them forward at a quicker pace, enabling OJT to move at a faster, more com comprehensive learning curve. That's a pretty good reason to get a coach. Also, communication. Up, down, sideways. You see, with all the communi communicational venues we have at our hands today, it is still the most underutilized movement within and without a business or personal life. Being connected 24 hours a day does not mean we are employing effective communication from the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom. A coach will help you to realign and focus total communication in all forms for the individual. That means people learn in different ways, folks. And you know what? They get information differently, too. Now, the big thing that we've talked about here lately is something called EI or EQ. And it's emotional intelligence. You see, emotional intelligence is the capability of individuals to recognize their own and other people's emotions. <laughs> you think that we'd all come by that natural, don't you? Well, something we need to learn. To be able to discriminate between different feelings and recognize the information being sent, to guide thinking and behavior, to adapt, adjust emotions within an environment, is a learned technique. 
These techniques, of course, can be learned and continually learned. A coach will help the individual correlate, discern, and evaluate their own actions and responses, as well as those the folks they come in contact with. Now think how important that is, leaders. Think how important that is. Recognizing what your own emotional intelligence is, but also trying to recognize what other people's emotional intelligence is. Pretty important, don't you think? Now, another thing that I, I talk about all the time, a friend of mine, another coach, she says all the time, practice makes permanent. You know, it's true. Life is what happens daily. I think we can all agree on that. And what you do daily, what you do daily with what happens is what makes the difference. A coach will assist the individual in attaining a written vision, a future picture, a written mission, their purpose, their calling, a written strategy, a day-to-day -day plan so they can live out their mission and achieve their vision, and something else that's even more important, accountability. You see, this is the thing we all struggle with. We all are great procrastinators. Just, you just have to admit that you are. Another part of having a coach is intentional awareness. When we get so into our life in business and at home, we tend to float through without any intentionality and then wonder why we did not do what needed to be done to get what we wanted. Becoming intentional takes dedication, a paradigm shift of thinking and doing. A coach will guide the individual to a new level of understanding the intentional life. And the last one here, this one's a hard one. Assumptions, assumptions corrupt. Assumptions corrupt. I've heard it said many times that assumptions become truth when repeated often enough. Our assumptions are based on our life's filters. Where we grew up, who we grew up with, what we saw, what we didn't see. They oftentimes hold us in a position of not accepting what is in front of us at the moment. They can also have us have a closed mind, unable to accept new thoughts. A coach will listen and then guide the individual through a learning and growing process to be able to listen, discern, and then make great decisions. You see, why have a coach? Why invest in leadership coaching for your, you, yourself, and your, the people within your organization? Because I believe a good coach will help them through where they're at and take them where you need them to be. They'll help you go where you need to be. Quicker, faster, more economical. Just a better place. Uh, OJT, it's just not fast enough. But a coach accepts where the individual is and moves them forward at a quicker pace, enabling the OJT to move at a faster, more comprehensive learning curve. Communication. A coach will help to realign and focus total communication in all forms for each individual. Emotional intelligence. A coach will help the individual collate, discern, and evaluate their own actions and responses as well as come in contact, everyone they come in contact with. Practice makes purpose, permanent, vision, mission, strategy, accountability, intentional awareness, a coach will guide the individual to a new level of understanding of intentional life, and assumptions, a coach will, will listen and then guide the individual through a learning and growing process to be able to listen, discern, and then make great decisions. I see our time is running close here. So on behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, we want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. Our hope is that you've received a nugget of wisdom or guidance that will help you build your leadership ability. If you have any questions on today's program, don't hesitate. Give us a phone call, 727-422-1833. Send me an email at dick at leadershipwrangler.com or go to the website, www.leadershipwrangler.com. 
And until next time, this is DW the Wrangler saying, ride hard, ride fast. <laughs>